right, well, Happy New Year, everyone. I'm Dr. Layla Hyshaw, founder of Diversity and Dentistry Mentorships. I'm so, so glad that you guys are here. This is gonna be really a great workshop, just even for myself and uh, even our mentors that are here. It's always good to kind of go through the process of set setting goals because we have goals in different areas of our lives. And we know that our goal here in our organization is to get you guys ready, prepped, prepared um, as best as you can be to really stand out as, as the best candidate for dental school so that we get you into dental school. But also I will always share that your mentors are really there to help you achieve any of your goals. You know, this is not a transactional relationship that we want to build with you guys. We it's really relational relational. Um, we want to make sure that you know that there's someone there who's behind you, rooting for you, challenging you, and really trying to help you see a future for yourself and get you there, okay? Um, so I'm really excited to have you here along with my colleagues. Um, we'll go around, we'll also um, kind of share what the plan is before we go and do um, introductions. But um, just very quickly here, I want to uh, introduce, I introduce myself. We have also our facilitators, Dr. Franklin, Dr. Um, uh, Glavish, and Dr. Sliger. Sorry, I'm admitting people at the same time, and Dr. Williams. And um, I'm going to have them introduce themselves uh, and give a little bit about where they practice, where they're, you know, where they're located, um, where they graduated from dental school, and you know why they are being, why they're serving as a mentor in diversity and dentistry mentorships. So, Dr. Franklin, you want to start? Yeah. Sorry, I was muted. Hi, everybody. I'm Nakia Franklin. I'm a pediatric dentist. I practice in Oakland, California. I attended dental school at Baylor College of Dentistry in Dallas, Texas, and then residency at Indiana University. Um, I'm a mentor because I've always loved teaching and tutoring throughout college, dental school, residency, um, and it, it's so much fun. It's really rewarding to be able to help people like I was helped. Um, I don't think I would be here if I didn't have like, so, I mean, so many mentors played a, played a big role in it. And so I get very excited whenever I get to have a small um, kind of part in helping somebody else get here because it's really fun and rewarding and awesome. Well, thank you. You know, I always appreciate you and um, learn so much from you too and having you on our, our, our other panel, uh, specialist panel as well. So, you know, thank you so much. Let's go to um, Dr. Glavish. <laughs> Hi, I'm Miriam Glavish. Um, I practice in Lubbock, Texas, which is very, very, very West Texas, practically like California, Texas. Okay. <laughs> um, I did my dental school at University of Florida in Florida, and I did my residency at Nova Southeastern, which is also in Florida. And the reason why I became, decided to become a mentor is because when I was in the pre-dental phase, I wish there was something like this. Like I did so much work by myself trying to figure out everything and find everybody and just figure out what I had to do. Um, but this is a great, uh, so I was looking to do, be a part of something similar. Um, without the headache of having to do everything yourself. And so when mm -hmm. I met up with other high school, I was like, oh my gosh, that's great. That's so easy for pre-dental um, students to do that. So now I am part of a bigger network to formally help people get into dental school. So that's why I'm like, very excited to be a part of it. Nice to meet everybody. Thank you. Yes. And she was at our inaugural youth summit, gave the speed, speed course in dental anatomy <laughs> and actually helped with the workbook for our U.S. Dream Academy partnership as well. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Dr. Sliger, a fellow pediatric dentist, you know, like we're, we're representing the house here. <laughs> so, yeah. Share a little a bit lot of us you. here. Um, so like she said, I'm Dr. Sliger and I went to dental school at UMKC in Kansas City and I did my residency at Children's Mercy Social in Kansas City. Before 
becoming a dentist, I was a high school teacher for seven years. And so I taught at an alternative high school. Almost all of my students were Latino students and me being a Latina, there was not, and no one in my family had ever done anything in the healthcare field and dentistry. Um, it was scary. And um, I had a child. I started dental school with an 18 month old and I uh, couldn't, I wouldn't have gotten here without all these people that kind of surrounded me and guarded me and like kind of pushed me, pushed me, even when I try to give up. And so that's what I try and do um, for kids in my local community. But then being a part of this is very special to me to kind of help um, ch children that maybe children were, you know, <laughs> they're in college, but people maybe didn't have anyone in their family it was intimidating going to dental school and seeing like man a third of these people their dads their moms they were all dentists right um, and I think a lot of a lot of students in this um group that are mentees I doubt have a, a mom or a dad that was a dentist we are kind of their pathway we're the leaders to help them get there so that's an honor to be a part of this for that reason Wow, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Yes, yes. I almost forgot about our, our tie with the MKC School Dentistry. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. Over 20 years. Or me. Not sorry, not aging you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Williams. Everyone's familiar with Dr. Williams. He, he dedicates so much time on our group account accountability calls um, that you really should go back and take a look at on our YouTube channel. But come on up, Dr. Williams. Hard for me to see in the gallery where you are. <laughs> All right. So hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Jared Williams. I'm from Houston, Texas, went to Meharry Medical College. Um, then I did my residency, a GPR residency at the University of Pennsylvania GPR with the, a, with the um, VA hospital. And I've been practicing for about 10 years. And I'm not a pediatric dentist, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys are special for all those who can deal with kids. I can't. I can't, so <laughs> any patient I could give you, please, please, please. Um, but I, my focus is, um, I have a concierge practice where I do mobile surgery at different offices. And as of late, I started training doctors how to do surgery. Um, so I'm super excited about that, but it's an honor and a privilege to mentor. So I'm at this position um, currently because I've had mentors after mentors after mentors. A small little story about myself is that my I had a 246 GPA in college. And my I, my dad was a military man, army ranger. So he's used to killing people with his bare hands. And so I didn't want to tell him what <laughs> the challenge I had with my GPA. But when I um, garnered the courage to do so, the fact, the one principle that changed my life was, he said, get with the smartest person in class. And that right there changed everything. And so mentorship from that mm -hmm. moment on allowed me to, uh, to become a doctor and also train doctors now. So this is an amazing experience for you guys. So mentorship is the way to shortcut all the challenges that life that will throw at you. Oh yeah, mentors matter. And yeah, thank you so much for serving. Oh, well, that's great. You know, in the interest of time, guys, for uh, now we have Dr. Doc, uh, some doctor uh, mentors here, like Dr. Chelsea. Can everyone, mentors and mentees, just go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat. Um, that way we can jump right into the programming. Thank you, Maya. Say hi, Maya there. And I know Luma. So just kind of put in the chat where, where you're from and uh, where you are in your dental school journey. Okay. All right. So let's do this. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> so Olivia, let it in. We are going to go over what do you need right now? Okay. What do you need to really get the most out of our short 90 minutes together? It's going to fly by. Just a quiet space. This is a time for you. So I really want you to come in with an open, focused mind. We're going to be sharing some things. Some things you may already know. Some things we just may need some reinforcement and reminders going through this and preparing. I was like, oh, yeah, I need, I need to implement this, blah, blah, blah. So have an open and focused mind. Let's turn off our apps, our notifications. Let's not be distracted. Have This is the time to focus on you. You know, one of the things we're going to talk about is really taking care of yourself and setting boundaries so that you can really achieve what you want, but you got to take care of yourself. Get a notebook, something to uh, take some notes with, or if you printed out the uh, sheets that we emailed earlier, you can write on that. Kind of start thinking about your top three intentions, what you want to set for the year. 
In those worksheets, I, I put together just a year at a glance, all the months. And that's what I need to know to kind of have a GPS for, for the year. Um, I want you to kind of think about where you want to put some of these deadlines. And then um, if you have a calendar, a planner, I meant to bring mine over, but I use a paper planner, but I also use like a Google calendar for things to alert me on certain things. Um, if I want to set some alarms to remind me to re review something as far as that I set on a goal or, or my milestones too. So have all that ready as we're talking, okay? And to kind of give you an overview of what we're going to go through today, here's our agenda, although this is totally informal, guys, okay? Um, I just really need to do this for myself so I can try to keep track of our time and be respectful of your time. But we've done the welcome, the introductions. I'm going to go into just some tips I thought of that really helped to help me set and maintain my goals really strategically. So I'll share those five tips with you for about 10 minutes or so. Then we're going to do an overview of the smarter goals. Now, if you guys registered earlier, I sent this um, cheat sheet on smart goals. But then I was talking to a friend who's actually a researcher in um, the area of goals. She's, she reminded me that there is now smarter goals. So we're going to talk about that with our facilitators today. Then we'll break up into our four rooms, our breakout rooms. And that is where you're going to take your goals and really talk with the mentors on how to set it, how to make these like really attainable and specific and how you're going to measure it. Because it is a new kind of skill for some. We're so used to just kind of setting a goal and going on, but there, there is a little bit of work involved. And when we come back, Dr. Frank Franklin will go over some mock interview tips. Um, I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but this would be a great opportunity to do a really short, really short, like less than five minutes mock interview with Dr. Franklin, and we can give some positive feedback. You know, we're all here to nourish each other and encourage each other. So if you would like to be <laughs> in the hot seat, if you will, just go ahead and put that in the chat. Um, and then if you stay till the end, I sound like I'm selling something, <laughs> stay till the end. We have a special opportunity, exclusive opportunity for you, but um, it's something we're going to open up to all the mentees. And right now, I think we're at um, over like 89. Luma, maybe you can remind me the number. Um, but it's going to be a raffle for something you may really, really want, but we will give you guys like... Um, extra entries into this raffle. Okay, and then at the end, we'll have questions and wrap up. All right, any questions before I get started? You can put a hand, raise your hand or anything. Okay, all right, well, let's jump in. Let's jump in, five tips to set and maintain your goals. So mindset, I know everyone has talked about mindsets and just even what we need to do when we're even thinking about um, not just a specific goal, but goals and in, in, in long-term goals as well. Um, there's that negative self-talk. So we're going to talk about mindset shift, casting a vision, protecting your time with clear boundaries, um, build habits to help you focus on your goals, and about the importance of accountability partner, your DID mentor. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm trying to move, there we go. Okay, so mindset. Transform how you think because how you think determines your behavior and your behavior then in turn determines your actions. If you're saying that uh, um, you're getting discouraged easily, maybe perhaps you've been studying for the DAT and your practice tests aren't getting to where you think you can apply and be competitive, I really want everyone to kind of realize that that negative self-talk is not going to do you any good. Stress can, can be beneficial, yes, when you are finding that you need to really push yourself to, to attain something, but the mindset um, that you have really will predict your future. I really do firmly believe in affirmations and speaking in existence what you want, and, and that will manifest itself. But your mindset is so fragile and it's very, um, you know, impressionable. So what, being careful of who you surround yourself, who are the circles of people that are your circle of influence. 
I don't want you to get discouraged if no one else in the family has ever gone to dental school or are telling you there's no way you're going to be able to afford dental school. I've been so excited to see all these posts on Instagram of students saying about these scholarships they're getting. Someone had a $100,000 scholarship from USC, and that is possible for you too. So then when we're talking about goals and you know you have a certain uh, score that you want to attain in that DAT. Well, think about that. You know, I need to study hard because I need to score well so I can be, you know, one of those that will be um, eligible for scholarships. So not saying, uh, not giving up, not um, having that, that idea that you just can't do it. But really, I want to just shift that your behavior is really, it's just a mind body connection. And I really want you to start writing down. If, I mean, and you don't have to journal. Some people just can't journal. But I find that when I am journaling, and of course, we're talking about things that, um, that you're working towards, it, it does kind of then stick into the, to the brain. There's research that actually shows that if you're writing things down and then you're committing it to memory and then you're speaking it and, um, and manifesting that. Cast the vision. So let me just move this just a little bit because I can't quite see. So um, one of the quotes by George Washington Carver is where there's no vision, there's no hope. Um, when you're setting a long-term goal, it, it helps you to see where you want to be. You may not know all the steps to get you there, but all of you are here with a common goal that you want to be a dentist one day. Um, there's so many steps along the way, but if you don't have that vision, it's almost like on a GPS map in the car. I don't know about you, but if I'm putting in the address to a certain destination, I need to actually have that route, uh, turn by turn route displayed for myself. I want to be prepared to anticipate what is coming next. I don't want to just at the last minute turn left and then I miss my turn. Because sometimes if you miss your turn, that takes a while to kind of make that U-turn and get back on track and you may get lost around the, uh, along the way. So casting that vision and one of the books um, here, I'm going to share some books with you guys today too. I really love this, The One Thing. I don't know. You can put in the chat if you have this book or read it, but it really talks about, you know, the simple truth of uh, establishing or, or really getting to external results by focusing your focus more narrowly and um, getting to that one thing that will make all the difference and will make everything seem just so, you know, easy to attain. So goal setting to the now they describe in the book is something that I actually uh, did when I was writing. Uh, well, it, it was interesting. Like when you set a someday goal, you then it then reveals certain things <clears throat> that you would need to do to get there and some things you never would have expected. So for example, I'll share. My someday goal, and I did this about five years ago, was um, I should have brought it in here with me, <laughs> but it was really I wanted to um, have financial freedom. And what would that look like someday? Well, my five-year goal then was to be able to, um, you know, and, and sorry, someday goals to have financial freedom and retire from private practice. So the five-year goal was, well, by then I need to have some passive income, some investments so that I would be able to achieve that goal. So what did I need to do in five years based on my someday goal? And so with that, I was like, okay, passive income. So then if I need passive, what, what avenue of passive income would work for me? So what's a one-year goal? Well, based on my five-year goal, that was, well, you know, I really want to start speaking. Um, perhaps I can, um, I know that's not passive, but that was extra income. <laughs> but then writing a book was one. I was like, oh yeah, I've always thought about being an author, but I never really thought I could do it. But that's because I really got so busy that I didn't take the time just to sit and really be still with my thoughts and my dreams. And, you know, you guys taking this time today is your time to do that as well. So, okay, so that's a goal in year. So I want to publish a book. So then my monthly goal was, well, do that book. What am I going to have to do? Well, I'm going to have to um, make sure I have an editor and I'm writing and I'm getting my chapters done. Okay, well, then for that, what do I need to do weekly? Well, I need a time block time that, when am I going to have time to write this book? I'm working full time. I'm a mother of three. And now how is that all going to happen? <laughs> well, I time blocked. And so the days that I was off, I blocked out three hours each Friday and I worked on it then. 
but what was the daily goal? What did I need to do daily? And it's, it's saying that you got to go from something really big and narrow it really down. Well, then my daily goal is that I got to make sure at work that I'm finishing my charts, um, that I'm getting everything organized so that um, I can make sure that I'm getting the rest I need so that by Friday I have everything cleared and I can commit to that. And then what do I need to do right now? Well, and remember, this is something I was doing all in one sitting. So that was my Sunday goal. I got all the way down to this to the right now. But what do I need to do right now? I needed to get a coach, <laughs> a writing coach, because I had no idea um, how to one get a, you know, start this or anything like that. So that's just kind of an example. Um, when we go through the smarter goals, we'll try to give you more examples with dentistry. Um, you know, and I know for some of you, you may want to own your own practice one day. That what's that's your Sunday goal and then your five years getting in dental school and then your one year is you no know, getting um, your admission test done so you know you can kind of follow where I'm going right <laughs> so this is a big area for me that I will say that um, I am still a student of setting clear boundaries <laughs> but what they the, what the saying goes is we teach what we most need to learn so I'm going to recommend another book on set Boundaries, Find Peace by uh, Nedra Glover Tawab. She's amazing and she has a great um, informational Instagram page that you might wanna take a look at because what happens is when we don't have clear boundaries and for all the dentists here that are on this call and for you too who are interested in dentistry, you're interested in going into a helping profession. That's because that's who you are. You care about others. And with that, sometimes we are overextending ourselves and we're saying yes to things we really don't have time to do. Sometimes we're saying yes to things because maybe we just don't want to hurt someone's feelings. Um, but what happens, that depletes you. And that also takes away from the time that you need to perhaps spend um, studying or saying no to something so that you can make sure you're at the level that you need to be to be competitive um, as you're applying to dental school. So uh, it, it she uh, her definition for boundaries are guidelines that keep us mentally and emotionally healthy and help us to feel safe. So what are the areas in your life that you need to set better, better boundaries to achieve your goals? Now, perhaps you're in a home where you are helping to uh, take care of someone in the family or perhaps your younger siblings or maybe your elderly um, grandparent. But is that sometimes you're, you're asked upon to do these things because you always have. When are the times that you know that perhaps you need to say no because you need to uh, go to school or take this class or do a workshop um, and you'll be not able to focus on that? So also, when I broke it down, I, I remember too, you actually have to set some boundaries with yourself too, being gentle with yourself. Um, we talked about the mindset um, and that negative self-talk. Sometimes, um, let's say you were doing those practice DAT exams and you didn't really meet the mark, don't give up on yourself. Don't say that you're too dumb and you're, not, you're never gonna be able to, if you can't do this, you can't get through dental school. That is not the case. Dental school will be there and dental school, and you'll have um, what you need to succeed, but just don't give up before you even have a chance to get there. What well, do you need to set better boundaries with your, your partner, your, your boyfriend, girlfriend, um, any family members, your kids, you know, the list goes on, right? What about in school um, or at work? Are they asking you to work extra hours, um, kind of abusing, um, uh, disres not disrespect, but abusing your ability to um, be, to say no if you, you can't and making you feel resentful if you do say no? Anytime that you are feeling like someone is making you feel bad or you are some resentment to that, then that's a clear indication that your boundaries have been um, violated. And in friendships, those who ask to constantly asking you for money or asking you to borrow something all the time and not getting it returned and, you know, those things. Um, not so much focus just on, on dentistry, but just in life, because remember, we was talking about your intentions and what you want to improve in your life. So just think about those areas of friendships and technology. You know, look at the screen time that you're on there. Or, or are you using those um, 
yeah, silence modes and to help the not reducing the notifications so that you are not distracted when you are studying, you know, make sure you're time blocking what you need to know, uh, what you need to do so that you're getting everything in in the time frame that you have. And, as, and in, in addition to when we're talking about goals, we don't want when I was thinking about this, we don't want your goals to kind of overpower everything. And that's, you know, um, my friend who was the researcher was sharing with me, as she said, I could share the stories, like she was really working on being able to run a 5K. So she had to get up super early in the morning. That was a big goal. She was on it, on it, on it. But at night lately, her husband had become pretty chatty and talking. She's like, oh my God, I need to go to sleep or I'm not going to get up <laughs> and I'm going to be fair. And, um, but then she realized, she said, well, you know, one of her values is loving her husband and being there for him and, and honoring their and growing, nurturing their relationship. So, you know, we don't, we, she knew that it was important to listen to him. Um, so we don't want the, the goals to go wild. There's a whole article on that I can share with you too, about um, being too, too strict and letting that overpower everything. So so find a balance, but be respectful of, of your time. Okay, and then can we see? Oh, sorry. And build habits to help you focus on your goals. So we were um, thought, uh, excuse me, we were talking about how our thoughts um, affect our, our behavior and our behavior affects our actions. And is it those actions that are really going to affect your um your, your future, really, because what you do now is what's going to change the projection or the trajectory of your, of your future. So think big, but go small. What does that mean? That is also kind of referenced in the One Thing book is there's tiny actions that will start a domino effect that um, will then make big changes, right? If you remember dominoes, you can find as a you tip one over and it gains speed and power that you can actually tip over something really, really heavy. So what are those big, big, big goals? Like one of the easiest examples, always talking about you want to lose weight, but yeah, I want to lose, not me, I, I need to lose, but I'm going to tell you how many weight pounds I need to lose. <laughs> but let's say somebody wants to lose 25 pounds, right? Um, what do you need to do? Well, let's see. Um, you want to exercise five days a week. And it's kind of like that setting the goal to the now, but more narrow, not the someday goal. Well, if you need to uh, work out five days a week, what days and when are you going to do that? Well, you got to make sure that you look at your schedule and the only time you can work out is in the morning. So then, okay, in the morning, but what time? So I got to do it before work. So that means what do I need to make sure that I'm doing, that you're getting enough sleep? Well, how do you know you're, that you're getting enough sleep? Well, if I go to bed by 10 o'clock, how are you going to make sure you're going to bed at 10 o'clock? Well, maybe I'm going to get off my screen by 9 o'clock and start my bedtime routine by 9 o'clock to make sure that I'm actually asleep by 10. So do you kind of see that, how that goes? Um, when you're thinking about studying is, yes, I'm going to make sure I'm studying, you know, six hours a week, but then how are you going to do that? How are you going to time? You're going to time block in your calendar, or you're going to make sure you're meeting with someone. How are you going to set up that study partner? Well, you got to call them. When are you going to meet? You know, it's just all those types of things that we want you to just really focus it down to the very tiniest action that's going to make big changes. I don't know why he's having a hard time advancing. <laughs> and then accountability, and we'll wrap this up. Accountability matters, and um, you need to decide what you need from your accountability partner. We're here as your accountability partners. That's why we have these calls monthly, our accountability calls, to make sure that you know that someone's checking in on you. But do you need a cheerleader or do you need a challenger? Um, you know, my nature is to kind of cheerlead everyone along. I'm mama mentor, right? I just want to just make everybody all happy. But that can be seen as sometimes like everyone gets a trophy thing. You know, is that what really is going to push you? Or are you going to say, well, um, what happened? How come you didn't um, study uh, with your, why, why didn't you meet with your partner to study last week? You know, and really dig into that. Or what is it that you need? But you have to see what you respond to best. So make sure that you're communicating that with your, your mentor or someone else who is your accountability partner, which leads me to the second one, your circle of influence. Um, oh, Jared, you may remind me on that. There's a quote that, that you're the result, 
you're the average of the five people that you surround yourself with, something like that. So who is your circle of influence? You can have more than one partner in different spheres of your life. So you may have us, your, dent, your dental mentors as your DID mentors, but you know, also accountability partner could be someone in your class or it could be um, another loved one um, or anywhere there that you find that you can gain the most from these uh, partners. So think of the circle of influence around you. And then set a plan. Be, schedule a plan that is consistent and regular with your accountability partner. Um, things get busy. And I really want to emphasize to our mentees that for your mentors, I mean, we we are busy. We are um, practicing. We, we have families and we're running <laughs> you know, nonprofits. And it's not that they uh, do not want to meet with you, but sometimes you got to get that little extra nudge. But if you have something set in the calendar, once you meet with your mentor, say, okay, I want to meet on the first and second Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And you put that into your calendar and it's set up on a recurring basis. You know, you just have to set it. Yes, things may came, come up and you have to change it, but the, um, don't feel that if you don't hear from the mentor that they don't care or don't wanna do it, um, you know, and, and it goes vice versa. You know, the mentors really should also inst um, implement that as well, but if we can work together to make sure we want you to have the best experience and get you to, to achieving your goals. Okay, so before we go into the smarter goals worksheet, I'm going to do a time check here. Okay, we're doing good. Um, any questions? Anyone want to come off mute and share any um, anything they gathered from that? Or I said something like that was totally way off that you don't agree with. <laughs> Let's chat. Anybody? Anybody? Let me see if there's anything in the chat. Dr. Williams, did I get that quote right? Yeah, you got it right. You're good. You're good. <laughs> I want to get you this time, but you're good. You're good. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And that was great. Dr. Chelsea left her email as well. Okay. All right. Nobody. Um, I feature Dr. Banks. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Future Dr. Darling, she's going to go to Texas A&M. Just my mentee. Yay! So proud of everybody. Okay, all right. So we're going to get started. Let's start with S for specific. And we have Dr. Franklin. You want to come off mute and share a little bit about that? <laughs> okay, well, I hope I did this correctly. But <laughs> um, looking at specific goals, I thought that this was really um really smart and helpful because I do this myself, but not as organized. And I think an example of, um, like the example you gave about losing weight, et cetera, those are good. Um, and summarize it. I know in school, one of my issues was picking a way to study and or picking a way to get something done. So specifically with studying, I would want to read the book and then I would want to look at study notes and then I'd end up just jumping around. And in the end, I would be overwhelmed because I chose five different ways to do something. And if I would have just chosen one way, I would have gotten there much faster. And so I think we continue to see this um, just throughout the application process and schooling in general. If you're more specific with what you want to get accomplished, you'll, you'll be able to focus your energy instead of going off in five different tangents to end up restarting every time. So um, when I started to do this early, not as tech savvy as you, Dr. Hyshaw. Okay, so looking at what we want to accomplish, just a couple of quick specific goals that I thought of. Um, if we say I want to be a dentist and we're in college, that's maybe a little too general because there's so many steps before then, like applying, being a good applicant, being a good student in dental school. Um, and it's also such a long time span. So even getting into dental school might be too general versus like, I want to get good grades mm -hmm. or I want to do well on the DAT. Um, so building it into smaller, more specific goals and then letting them um, kind of, you know, still not losing big picture, 
uh, goals, but focusing on the little ones so that we don't get um, discouraged if it seems like it's so far away and it's so hard to accomplish because we all like to do little check boxes as we go. So um, it said like focus on why it's important. I think this is great because if you forget why you're working so hard, there will be days where you're wanting to quit or very mm-hmm. discouraged. So if you just remind yourself, I want to care for others and I want to provide for my family, um, it's it will help to support your goal and push you through towards it. Um, who is involved, just like you were talking about, we have mentors, we also have parents, teachers, tutors, um, spouses, kids, especially as we get further along in the process. Um, and it's important to not lose sight of those people, especially if they're part of our who and why. Mm-hmm. Um, and then where is it located? I thought about this more metaphorically because um, some of it's like internally, like our internal drive is where our goals are coming from. Some of it's external, some of it, some of the goals are set by us and some of them like I need a 22 on the DAT is set more by averages. And um, for everybody, I guess those specifics will vary, but just understanding the contextual framework seems really useful for making sure that we set it up correctly. Um, And then lastly, when it said which resources are limited. I think this is important. Um, For me, looking at the process, resources were like cost. Did I need to save money? Did I need to work? How did I need to apply for scholarships? And how was my time divvied up? Like you were talking about. Um, If you say yes to everything and it's taking you away from your specific goals, Uh, you'll end up drained before you can even focus on your own personal goals. And it's really easy to do that in college and in dental school and just throughout the whole process. So keeping your goals in mind, but also not being selfish. So finding a nice balance. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, what I, I just was thinking about when you were saying getting so involved, I'm thinking about in school because we know you have to be so involved. Everybody wants to be like the best candidate. So I'm going to be in every activity, every, every extracurricular. But I know for a fact when I was speaking to Dr. Hewlett and the other admission um, the deans that are saying they want to see the quality of involvement in the work you're doing, not just how many you can check off. So just think about that. That just came up. Thank you, Dr. Franklin. Okay, Dr. Lavish, for measurable, you're next, right? Yeah. Hello. Yes, Thank talking you. about measurable um, in terms of reaching for your goals is, I think, the easiest and hardest thing to do because it's easy to put goals and write them down, put them on a calendar, and it's hard to stick to them. <laughs> so some things I thought of were, well, first, it's easiest because you already know things are already established. You have to take the DAT during a certain year. The access application to apply to dental school opens at a certain time. There's deadlines for a lot of these things, especially if you're going to a med field or dental school or anything, pharmacy. Everything has a deadline for what you need to accomplish. So you get the deadlines, get the dates, and then work backwards in putting your goals and measure, hey, every week I have to put uh, work on finding X for this or that for that. It's a lot of different things. You have to really be very careful in knowing what you need to get where you need to go. And then each item, you need to find a time to complete what you need to do for that. It seems very overwhelming, but once you get everything that you need to do, sit down, do it one time, it's easy to keep checking. And for me, a lot of times as I get onto a goal and I forget about it, I slack, oh, I can do that next week. Oh, I have an extra hour here or there. I have to put in, in my schedule, a time to go over my schedule <laughs> so that way I make sure I stay on task and put it in places that's going to help you. For me, I don't know why. I can't put things in my phone. I can't write them on a calendar. I have to buy an overpriced frou-frou calendar that I always <laughs> use in January and I never use again. And I keep buying it every year. That in my mind, I don't know. Once I have it, I put stickers everywhere in it. I know roughly what I have to do every week. I look at it. 
I don't write anything down. I just know my head. And that's just the way I function. I just accept it about myself. But that's how I understand everything. If I don't buy that overpriced frou-frou planner, I literally don't know my life. So I buy it every year. I started it. <laughs> but that works for me. It might not work for you. A lot of people, their phone works really well for them. Or writing things on the calendar or the refrigerator or in their car or rather at school or something like that helps them. Um, but that, that's the best thing of how to get yeah. things accomplished in terms of a measurable standpoint. I love those examples. Yeah, I need the whole picture. I think, especially with us wanting to, it, us dentists and those going to dentistry, very visual. So I have that picture just kind of somehow just, just gets it in the brain better when you can see the full picture. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Sliger, will you talk to us about attainable goals? Good. So all of these always kind of roll into each other because it's the same purpose of actually making a goal. So is something achievable? Is it real? And that's one thing I had to grapple with when I was a successful high school teacher for seven years. I had a paycheck coming in. I had my life and I had to look at this and decide, was this a whim or was this real? Like, how do I um, get there? Like Dr. Franklin said, you can't just say, I want to get into dental school. There's all this a cascade of things that can get you there. And so once you do that initial step of dividing your big overarching goal into smaller segments, then you can look at each one and say, like, how um, do I accomplish this particular goal? Who do I need to talk to? Who needs to be involved in this? Is it all on me or do I need to have certain um, other people part of my team in this particular realm? Um, is this possible with my current uh, financial situation and my time constraints? So when I initially started um, down my path, I was trying to take the DAT and I was not doing well on my practice tests. I um, was floundering and I had um, just signed up for a test. And this is just an example of a way to, to get that achievable goal, but first kind of messing up on uh, the front end when you're going that way. And that's how some of this will be for some of you. And that's, that's just real life. And I, um, I said, you know, in five months, I'm going to take the DAT and I'm just going to study, study, study and do great. You know, but I had a kid. And so like, I would be studying a little bit at night or like on the weekends, but then I would um, be, you know, also playing on Facebook. I don't know, like it just wasn't always working out the way I thought or envisioned that it would. So it came down to the day of my DAT and um, that whole weekend before when I'd been taking practice tests, I was um, so stressed out and I was embarrassed. I'm like, I have to make a decision. Am I going to go in there on Monday and, and take this test? Or am I going to forfeit, forfeit the mm. $200 that it will cost me to not do it? And at that time, that $200 was a lot of money to me. Right. I made the decision that day to not go and take the test because I was not ready and I had not done my part to get there. Um, and so I did not take the test so I wouldn't have a poor score initially. And then I had to sit down and start again and think mm. of what does it look like to really study for this test? Um, and I realized like, I am kind of ADD. I need some, I need like a one-on-one -on -one person. I can't just sit in like a room and just like, I'm always moving and like, I, I needed to be with someone. And so I, I found like the Princeton Review, that's $1,200. Mm -hmm. I didn't have $1,200. Um, so I started like sell, selling stuff, like my clothes and like working on jobs. I was a high school teacher and I was like doing this on the side. Um, I asked for that for Christmas, like instead of buying me, you know, random things, can you put some money to help me take this test? And it did. And it actually pushed me back a year from being able yeah. to apply. But by being strategic and making my end goal achievable, um, I did really good on that DAT. And if I would have taken <laughs> initially that first time, it would have been um, not a, a good outcome. And so it is sometimes as you're going through this journey, um, when you're looking at it, you have to, you have to be kind of um, a reflector and you have to ask yourself, am I being honest with the amount of work that I'm putting into this? Am I sitting down and um, doing all these steps? Um, 
and and step back and make changes when you realize you may not and then be proud of yourself when you do hit those and so all of these things none of us are exceptionally smart or exceptionally wonderful or exceptionally anything but we're all hard workers and so are you and so just being able to get all those steps together is is important and so just always keeping that in the forefront is it achievable is it real um with what I have going around right now, like Dr. Hishaw said, if you are involved in like 20 different extracurricular activities and you're in a fraternity or a sorority and you're doing this and this mm-hmm. and this a job, um, you're not going to be able to adequately put the time in to get either good grades or your DAT or something, you know, something's not going to work. And so you have to step back and, and look at what's, um, what's actual, um, actually able to happen. Oh, I'm so glad you shared that. That's that's really um, impactful because I know a lot of people would be in that situation and and just so scared to to actually make that decision because um, you know you may set you back and and delay everything, but is anything that's worth it is going to be the work and take time. So thank you, Dr. Slager. All right, Dr. Williams, you are up to talk about realistic setting no, the goal. It's, it's, it's phenomenal to be around all these beautiful but educated and accomplished women. So I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here. I think, I, I think I'm in here on accident. I don't know if I'm supposed to be here, but I'm going to take, <laughs> take my opportunity. Take my opportunity. So number one is this. Um, realistic is a mindset. Um, I remember when I was back in dental school and um, I used to see the young ladies, like Dr. Steiger was saying, they had a child. And I always try to figure out, they should not be doing well. But the women who had kids, they always had the top of the class. So that's number one. And it seemed as if I also had a classmate who was 42 when we started in dental school. So is that realistic? And then you have somebody like myself who had a 246 GPA in college. Is that realistic? And there's so many different challenges with all the different things that are going on. And so the question, so I'm glad that when this smarter goal sh- worksheet was completed, it said achievable within the time frame given. That is key because when you really look at it, there really, anything is possible. There is, I go by, I live my life as closely as possible to principles. And one thing I, uh, one thing that I go by is um, whatever a man or woman thinketh in his heart, so is he or she. So if you think you can do it, you can actually do it without compromise. You know, there was a point in time where dentistry had majority of men. Now it's shifted. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there was a point in time where, you know, it was impossible for a person, a a black man to be in the president. That happened. Now, I'm just not making it political, but I'm just highlighting the fact that what is realistic. And, you know, with all the different things that are highlighted, you know, anything is possible. And so it's just one of those things where, like, with... Um, Dr. Franklin was saying to not just say I want to be in dental school, but let's like, let's focus it down to what I really want to do, like my GPA. And then what Dr. Um, Blavish was saying, like, hey, I need to get a food food calendar. Like, that's huge. Like, you got to spend some money to get it. And then what Dr. Sliger was saying, like, yo, I need to make sure that I'm going to make a decision. Like, <laughs> I'm going to make a decision. Now, she's a specialist. Like, she had a, she was a graduate. I mean, she, 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 did all these different things, but she made a decision like, I'm gonna cut myself in such a way that I get the goals. And so I guess the, the point that I'm saying right here is just like, there's no thing that's unrealistic. It's a simple right. fact that if you want it, you're gonna make the decision, which D side is side is to cut and D is to actually make that thing happen. And so when you make the decision, there's no such thing that's realistic because whatever goal that you put up, if you're around the right environment, because environment is key because environment is the invisible knife that shapes your character and so i really want you guys to really get this that when you're in the right environment it doesn't matter what who you are where you came from if you make the right decisions and you come around uh, individuals and you have the insight realistic doesn't even make sense it doesn't even take take in and so i just want you guys to be aware that it is possible anything could happen um, I follow the stock market and, you know, talk about passive investments. Elon Musk, he has blown this world away with all the electronic ve- electric vehicles. When you have Ford and GM and all these, their stocks are just dropping and plummeting. And through the pandemic, what is quote unquote realistic, he's just taking it to a whole nother level. And so I really mm-hmm. want you guys, I want you everybody to understand that, yo, if it's something that you want, 
just follow the plan because like friends of the information that my dad gave me, he was like, find the smartest person in class and do whatever they do. And they're going to show you exactly the steps. And you can literally start at the bottom and be on the top and be able to be in the space in the seats that we're being able to give you this insight. So I just want to let you guys know that greatness is, is inside of all you guys. And it is possible. You just like Dr. Slager said, you have to make that decision. You're going to have to spend some money like Dr. Gladys said, and you're going to be like Dr. Franklin, where you're going to have to say, Hey, I need to make this thing defined so that when I pull the trigger on whatever decision I decide to make, it's going to be successful. Wow. Oh, I'm always inspired after you speak. <laughs> Thank you. It's true. It's true. It's true. Okay. Yeah. And so as I finish out the last three, just the time bound, we've kind of talked about it. Now it makes sense. Now for being this specific and, and all and measuring everything, then it makes sense to have that time bound part of your goal. And the, the obvious ones are like uh, when Dr. Slager mentioned that, you know, there are certain deadlines on, on when the test is going to be um, offered. Um, so making sure that whatever goal it is that you have, that you set a start and finish date to it, have that um, in your calendar, in your written calendar, your digital one, have a reminder that your deadline is coming up. Like if you just haven't even started working on your personal statement <laughs> and you, you forgot to put that deadline, then that might just go on and on. And then you're at the last minute trying to put something together and you don't have time to have someone look over it, edit it, you know, add to it and revise it. So really putting it, making it time bound and evaluate. I think Dr. Slager, again, your example was spot on. You were in that position where you had to make that decision. So you've gotten to the point now, you've done everything, the time is here. You need to evaluate. Is this something that you need to change? Um, uh, or revise, well, excuse me, revise is the next one, <laughs> um, or decide if you're going to continue working on it or take the test or not take the test. So another uh, way of doing that, again, is kind of setting those timer uh, deadlines or reminders in, in your calendar, actually also including your um, your accountability partner, your mentor, let them know, like, um, every quarter, can we make sure, like, we're meeting bi-weekly or maybe you're meeting monthly but once a quarter can we make sure that we just have a goals meeting together so we can kind of evaluate where I am and like just kind of reposition that GPS and get get centered right so evaluate and then revise this is the time that you just call kind of a Goldilocks um, decision was your goal too easy was it too hard or was it just right? Are you right where you need to be? Um, and and I'm thinking of all the things for preparing yourself for school and dental school is like the shadowing hours. Have you um, gotten enough? Or was it easy to work with, um, get enough hours with this one dentist? Or are you having a challenge? Who else do you need to reach out to make sure they can make an introduction so you can get into the office and get those hours in there? Um, you know, just really revising it and making, um, reassessing where you need to be. For example, too, I think about for students, and, you know, especially I have a, a high school senior about to graduate and um, a lot of kids last year, they were all excited about, you know, going to college, but then they had to just, that was their big goal, right? But we're in a pandemic. Were they going to spend the thousands of dollars to go away to school or was it a better idea to maybe stay at home, maybe do a year at the junior college, uh, increase, uh, you know, improve their GPA so that they can apply again somewhere else that they didn't get into. I mean, just thinking and pulling things out to let you see that those are times where to really um, achieve these goals, looking at where you are and revise it to make it um, better fit for you. Okay. All right. So just looking at the time, we're just about 10 minutes, a little over. So we we want to give, why don't we give 10 minutes then um, to work in our break rooms. So Dr. Franklin, take it away with some tips for successful interviewing. Yes. Okay. So um, I always like to start with a little disclaimer that everything I say is just my opinion. There are many opinions. Um, my experience and my talk about this is because I did run mock interviews for, at first for our pre-med, pre-dental ethics group. Um, and then I sat on um, and did like the student tours. 
for our dental school, which was Baylor. Um, so that was fun. And then they'd always ask us, like, what did you think? of your uh your interview um i also got in then in residency um got to be a part of the interview process as well so this was like a little side project and hobby for a while so um definitely pop in with questions i can't see when they're coming up so just unmute and hop in uh, and then if people want to see a mock interview i can um, I can do it myself because I didn't expect anybody to, <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect anybody to want to be interviewed, so I don't mind doing it whatsoever. Um, first, in my opinion, the purpose of the interview is to get to know you and to get to know you beyond your paper application. The paper application says a lot of things about you, and um, in one part, they're just trying to verify that what they're reading matches it because everybody can make a lot of claims and not actually be that person. Um, so they're trying to talk to you. They're trying to see your personality, if it matches what was on the paper and to get things that you just can't get from a 2D little stack. So your goal isn't to necessarily say, oh, I got this grade, um, this is my GPA, this is my DAT. It's more like, I'm a normal person, I can have a normal conversation, like, I'm easier to talk to, and uh, I'm going to fit in at your school. Like, I can have friends and help be helpful and be nice to my teachers and things like that and represent the school well once I graduate from your school. Like, I'll be a good alumni. Um, so Ooh, that's, the, a good, that's a good inside tip right there. <laughs> yeah, um, because you're joining our profession, right? So anytime that we were interviewing people, we always wanted to think like, who's somebody that I would want to go to get dinner with or somebody that, you know, it, when they're out there and they say, oh, I'm a graduate of Baylor, I'm going to be proud and not like, everybody thinks, ooh, you, you went to Baylor? Like, what type of school is that, right? So we want people who are going to represent our profession and also take really good care of patients. So keep those things in mind and the values of the school. Um, so mock interviews are wonderful, as you were talking about. It gets the jitters out. It's also, it's so cringy to hear yourself, but I loved recording these so that people could hear and see kind of some of the things that they should work on. So I've clearly slipped up because right now as I'm talking, I can see how much my hands are moving, which is something that I would always get called out on and call myself out on. Um, another speaking issue that I have that comes up is my ums, right? But whenever I was getting ready for my interviews, I got really good at holding my hand, still having good posture and not saying um, but instead taking a second to think instead of saying um, right? So it's okay if you say um, it's okay if you're really jittery, it's okay if you say something absolutely ridiculous. They also understand that you're, um, and maybe not this, not everybody, but for the most part, you guys are still really young, at least compared to us. When I look at you guys, I'm thinking, oh, these kids, I know that you're finished with college, but it's just so young to us. So we look and we just think you're adorable. Like it's okay to be nervous. So uh, the next thing I like to really, really emphasize is studentdoctor.net. Can anybody unmute and like pop in if they are utilizing studentdoctor.net? I did. Oh, good. One of the best resources for any graduate school application process. Student mm -hmm. document, how I learned how to study for the DAT, how I figured out the best materials without just reading Amazon reviews. Also, mm -hmm. they so many resources. One of the best is they have the actual interview questions from almost every graduate school. People are like super active on studentdoctor.net. So today I went and I looked at questions that Baylor is asking. Oh, and wow. yeah, when I was interviewing, 
I would go on studentdoctor.net before every interview and see what sort of questions do they ask at this school. It'll also tell you the format. So sometimes you're going to interview and you're going to be across from two people. Might be different with COVID. Sometimes you'll go in and you're interviewing with like five people and it's two students, two faculty, etc. versus one-on-one. And because I was so nervous, I would feel better if I knew what I was expecting, right? Student Doctor Not Net will tell you sample questions, questions that people got asked, if it was organized, what the situation was, like the format. And that was extremely helpful because I would also have my buddies who we would do mock interviews of each other with the actual school's questions. Now, if you're going to more interviews, like interview five or six, you're probably so over it, you don't need to, like you already know what you're gonna say. But still, at the beginning, very helpful. Uh, I don't recommend memorizing answers. Outlines. Outlines tend to be more natural when you're talking versus a memorized answer. Also, even if you know the answer right away, like I know I would get so excited and I'd look like a little chihuahua like about to explode. If you just take a break, take a breather, calmly answer. It's a little bit more of a poised way to answer questions. And also it gives you some time to think about it if the question does catch you a little off guard. So, and um, other tips, be on types of questions, be prepared for tough questions. If you got a C or a D in a class or your first time taking the DAT, you tanked it, those are probably going to come up consistently. So being prepared to answer um, is going to be helpful and it shouldn't be a, a source of shame, but kind of as a time to vindicate yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I did, you know, my first year, I didn't know I wanted to be a dentist. I went into college. I wasn't as prepared as I should have been. Um, it wasn't until my second year that I understood how much I would need to work for this. Or, you know, if your parent was sick for a year, just be prepared to vindicate yourself. This is a great opportunity to do that. Um, Cause they'll have red flags on each kind of application. And when they're discussing it, they'll say, hey, you know, what happened the second year? And whoever interviewed you, that person is hopefully your advocate when they're sitting in a panel or and discussing everything and not everybody got to meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. You're hoping that the person that interviewed you liked you and, and spe speaks up for you and says, oh, I talked to them about that. It turns out like, you know, that year she actually broke her leg and it, you know, something like that. So be prepared for the tough questions. Um, next thing, trick questions, right? Trick questions were no fun for me. <laughs> um, but I liked asking them when I was on the other side. An example would be like, do you like money? <laughs> right? um yes everybody likes money uh, kind of the way to go into this is to be honest it's like yes I like money but it's not my primary goal certainly I do want to be able to provide um for my family and to work hard for a lifestyle that allows me to do that but certainly I would never put that over my primary goal which is caring for others because in reality like Teachers also care for others and nurses care for others, but you're trying to be a doctor. So there's something to that extra higher level that you're pushing yourselves towards. And we all understand it. Just know that there are some people who like to ask these questions. And if in doubt, let your honest answers kind of guide you because yeah, you wouldn't want to, you don't want to mislead anybody. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Great answer, by the way. <laughs> um, so avoid traps. Just quickly reviewing like a couple of questions that always seem to come up. Um, what is your one strength and your one weakness? Try not to like imagine you're the smartest person in the room and say my one weakness is I'm a perfectionist. I just, I can't not be perfect, right? That actually doesn't come across great. It sounds great, but not really, right? Um, they're looking to understand you as a person and it's okay to admit a little bit. Um, but I'd also say like, don't say, oh, my, my addiction, right? 
<laughs> um, maybe pick like a middle ground, like my weakness. Oh, sometimes I'm disorganized. Like that's a good one. Something that will not disqualify you from being a good candidate, but it is also very realistic and honest, right? Um, let's see a couple more things, just tips that I had thought of, um, appearance. So dress for success, please be punctual, be on time, get there early. You're in a new city. You're taking an Uber. What if Ubers aren't available where you're at? Like try to be punctual, have a backup plan, um, have your hair done, nails for ladies and guys, just trimmed, clean, um, shave, smell nice. I've actually heard lots of horror stories about these things where it wasn't in a positive, positive way. So just trying to present yourself, even if you have an amazing application, if you show up, like you don't care about the school, they, they don't need you. Like, it's more about personality at this point because everybody's smart enough to have made it to the interview. Um, so it's not like, oh, I, I am so great. Your school needs me. That's pretty much not the case for anybody. So just showing up with an attitude of you care will um, present a good foot forward. And then, oh, another thing. When you're going to a school, please learn about that school a little bit. Do they do a lot of community service? Um, are they really into research? Are they into um, different things? Like, are they primarily an international school? Things like that, because they might ask you, and they probably will, why our school? And one, it will help you structure your answers. So if you like research and you're at Harvard, and that's a huge research school, you're probably going to want to talk about your research that you did in undergrad, areas that you think are interesting. Um, sorry, I know this is like kind of a lot of you guys are already in dental school, so uh, you're like, Okay, I'm past this, but yeah, they need to know for the if they want to specialize. <laughs> yeah, oh, for specialty, of course, that was huge, great. Um, and then avoid asking questions that can be found online, like how many hours a semester. If it's found online, it just kind of looks like you didn't look into it. And then be prepared for the worst case scenario questions, like what are you going to do if you don't get in? Um, because sometimes those can throw you off. And I remember thinking is he saying I'm not going to get in? Um, but instead, it's just like a question to see kind of how far ahead you've thought and how organized you are. Uh, let's see. Okay. To avoid rambling, you know, just try to structure things. But also, I loved my interviews where it ended up being a conversation, not just them asking questions from a bullet point list. Um, if that starts to happen to you, that's wonderful. Don't get stressed out that they're not asking you the questions. It just means that you guys are connecting on a better level. I will say, uh, I did run into a couple of awkward interviews. And at this time, I would be very careful to talk about anything that might be politically charged. I would avoid topics like COVID. I would avoid topics like the economy or student loans or anything that might be controversial. And if it starts to go there, I would just be as neutral as possible. Like, oh, that's an interesting point. And then um, moving on to the next thing, because you just, you never know the person who's interviewing you and their beliefs. And really this isn't the place for those sort of talks to happen. And I apologize in advance if it happens because I had a couple of those come up and it was uncomfortable. Um, but really in that situation, I just tried to roll through it because that one person is not the school. So don't let it like kind of negatively impact your view of the school or keep you from that school just know that right now things are um controversial so avoiding those okay so that was kind of my rundown of things that uh, i have thought of what questions do you guys have those are great i was going to remind everyone you have you uh well how Dr. Franklin came on to Diversity Industries, she was 
just spending so much time and donating her time and talents in writing a lot of blogs for us. And we had that, did you know, the DID, did you know? And there is one on interviews. And it just reminded me that, oh my gosh, you, you did that. So I'll re repost that in our, our Facebook group too. So, so full of a lot of insight, a lot of information, even on DAT prep too as well. So thank you, Dr. Franklin. But yeah, any questions? No. Did anyone want to do one? Also, if anybody wants to do a little short mock interview outside of the group, um, <laughs> feel free. and basically we can just do a little call and I can, um, like, I'm happy to go through some questions with you guys, but if anybody wants to do one now, I promise. It will be very easy. Or if you guys want me to answer a question, I have like a list. I can do that as well. Right. Can you put your email or how you would like them to contact you in the chat? I will put it in the chat. Yeah. And I saw Dr. Chelsea she's doing yeah. that. Some things to add because my I helped during the interview process, and my goal was to like not roast people, but just kind of really dive in and say the things that the faculty could not ask. Not personal things, not things that were off the record, but just things to kind of catch them off guard to see how they would answer. And one thing that I heard that is um, really interesting for pedo residency, I asked, I'm like, oh, they're, everyone went took their turn. Super hype about pedo, pedo everything, pedo, 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 pedo. So I said, okay, great. So who's in the AAPD for students? Cause it's actually free for membership crickets. Who went to the last convention because it's actually free for free dental crickets? So it kind of put everyone, everyone's like, oh my gosh. So to be on the other side, if you're vowing for something and you're hardcore, you say that, have the proof to back it up. Oh, I've been a mem member for two years. Oh, I went to their recent convention because mm -hmm. it's going to put you over the other applicants because it's something that no one really thinks about. So that's a, one thing to, to add to your. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, AAPD even offered some free uh, memberships for our, our DID mentees too, so that they could attend the um, annual meeting. So something to keep in mind. Yeah, um, I love that and joining like ASDA, things like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, when we were interviewing for PETA, we'd also look to see that your interest started before fourth year of dental school. <laughs> so um <laughs> have you ever babysat? Like, were you around kids? Even when you're thinking about how you want to structure your time and what you want to volunteer in, not everything has to be dental, right? Like, it's nice to see people that are diversified. Um, but if you love kids and you're thinking about pedo, like maybe volunteer at a library reading books. But if you've literally never spent any time with kids and suddenly you want to be a pediatric dentist, it's kind of a mm, interesting. Um, so definitely great point there. Oh, and everything you say when you're with the students who are interviewing you is technically part of the interview. Mm -hmm. um, if you go out to a social, um, try to be reasonable. I know somebody that was on an externship and got very, very inebriated and they still <laughs> like, were roasting her two, three years later and multiple program directors heard about this like incident wow. that happened. And so program directors and, you know, all the interview, um, like heads of the admissions kind of know each other. Like they're usually friendly. They go to a lot of committees together, especially in specialties. So just always try to be professional when you're out because it's a very small world. It's a very small world. I don't know. Um, I was going to say this. If, if, if none of the students wanted to jump in, I could... Um, I could volunteer just so that they could see it. Yes. Oh, I love this. Okay. Um, let me find one. Okay. Do do. Okay. And side note: when you apply, please put hey your IG on private. It was everyone was <laughs> diving. We got the applicant list, and we all went online <laughs> and searched everybody. And we're like, look at this girl, look at this picture. Do we want that in our program? And like, oh my gosh. So please put it on private or delete, delete that for the application process because they, you will be found. That's so okay. funny. 
Hey, hey, real Good. quick before you guys go into that, just because I, you know, I want to honor the time if you have to go. Before you go, I we want to put a link in for our um, a, a post workshop assessment and the year in mentee survey. And you guys can cut cut and paste the link that's going to go in the chat because if you complete these two, then you will be entered twice to get all this DAT prep resources um, that's been donated by Luma. Um, and then a special private session with Dr. Franklin on your interview <laughs> as well. So uh, the urine survey and a quick, just a quick workshop um, survey is going to be just a few questions, not even long that you can just click. Um, we just need to keep track of what we're offering so that we can get some certification um, through ADA CERT for continuing education. So we really, really appreciate that if you could do that for us. So I'm going to have Luma put that in the chat so you guys can have that while we hear this awesome, fantastic interview. And if you have to take off, we totally understand. We're just so grateful that you were able to join us, but you don't want to miss this. So hang out just a little longer. <laughs> Okay, I think I got a question. Okay, hi, future, but really a doctor, Jared Williams. Um, I hope you're doing great today. Just a quick question. I'm wondering if you were in a position with an overwhelming task at hand and you had to do it, um, what is the method that you would apply to get that task done? Uh, good question. Could you give me a little bit more of a... Uh scenario so I can answer it effectively. Great. So in dental school, you know, we have about 25 hours a semester, which is more than what um, most people, including you, usually take in a semester. So say that you had six different finals in the final week of our semester, and you really hadn't um, had a lot of time to study, and you were coming up on the last three tests. Um, how would you approach that? Well, I would approach that in the same manner I did to get to entrance into this dental school. And that was just to do the best I can. Um, you know, I understand with having so many mentors that dental school is gonna be a challenging process. And the only thing I can do is be the best student I can. One thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to lower the standard of this dental school. And I'm going to do everything in my power to learn from, my, learn from this scenario and potentially see what I could do to prepare for the next, next point. But outside of that, you know, I'm going to put my best foot forward and be the applicant, be the um, student that you guys believed in to give me this opportunity to be a wonderful advocate for your school and to fulfill you all's mission. Great, that's wonderful. Yeah, sometimes the best that you can do is what you can do, but I like that you really stuck to your um, to your values whenever you approached that. So I love that even though it's a tough situation, um, one, he asked me to clarify, right? So you can do that. If you don't understand the question, you can totally say, oh, um, I want to make sure I understand the question. Could you clarify that a little bit more? So great start. And second, I like that he just brought it back to, I'm a good person and I'm not going to cheat and I'll just deal with it because I've already done it. So that was a really well composed answer. And you can see how sometimes these questions are really ambiguous and you can literally go anywhere with it. But if you kind of get lost and you bring it back to your values and just you being a good person, it still comes across with a, a good representation of you as the applicant. Can I say something? Yeah. Um, for all those that are listening, you could also flip it and ask a question like this, you could say something along the lines of, um, that's interesting that you say that, um, how do you all hand, how, do, how have your students handled, you know, the rigorous process of your school at this juncture with situations like that? Um, because what could end up happening is this, is that you're not just there to be grilled, you're also there to get information to see if what you have, the talents and the gifts that you have, is if they're even worth it for that school. And I say that in the most humble perspective because when you guys go on these application processes, just like um, what Dr. Franklin is saying, like 
they're going to put you in a position that you can go for the bait, but you also want to be able to understand, hey, have the self-respect to acknowledge the fact that, hey, you're valuable. And by them giving you entrance, you're going to end up, if you're true to who you are and just what DID is all about, you know, you're going to be able to diversify dentistry and then also be something that they're going to be like, hey, I had this person in my class and I even interviewed them and it just takes it to a whole nother level. So just really keep that in mind. Um, and I'll just say this one last thing. It was a one young lady, she was a doctor, she graduated, she was doing the residency uh, on the residency application process and she was just super down and out and I singled her out because she was, she was black, black. And I was like, yo, I wanna speak to you because I knew that she went to the school and she was just like, who, me? And I was like, yeah, you, I wanna speak to you. And I'm the only black male doctor that's in this program and one of the clinical assistant professors. And I was just like, I wanna speak to you. And I just started pouring into her during that time frame. She said after that pro, after the presentation, after everything was said and done, her energy just went to the next level and she killed the out the um the the application, I mean the um interview process. So mm -hmm. I'm just giving y'all some insight now, like acknowledge the fact and she got into her um, one of her top programs. And so I just say this, like you guys are more than comfortable. And I want to say Dr. Franklin is definitely setting you guys up for success. So all you gotta do is just walk into it. Yeah. Indeed. Great. They <laughs> gonna be lucky to get you even if you walk out of that interview like oh, oh, and, and we all probably felt that way at schools that we got into <laughs> yes for sure mindset mindset yeah yeah they're lucky to have you uh we're lucky to have you guys all of you that ha have been here today um i'm just so grateful i just hope that you found uh, a pearl, a nugget, something that you can take and really, really work with and to help you just to set these goals, um, set you up for success. Like Dr. Williams said, um, just know that we are, we are here for you. We want to see you succeed. 